Hi, I'm John Mortensen, owner and operator of PetDoorStore.com, and today I'm going to show you my favorite wall pet door, and this is the Endura. Now, the Endura is my favorite for two reasons. It is very weather tight, and it is very durable. Um, most pet doors have a rubber or a vinyl flap that's hung on the, on the frame at the top, and it flexes as the dogs go through back and forth. So, over a period of years, it flexes back and forth so many times, and eventually they'll start to tear at the top. So really commonly, you'll see them tear right, here, right up here in the corner. The other thing that happens is uh, your dogs typically go the same way when they go out the door. So they're always going off to this side. And, uh, and eventually that'll bow the flap out. So you might have a great seal down here at the bottom where the magnets are. But there's no magnets on the sides. Or maybe there's one magnet on the side. And, uh, and the, the side will bow out and there'll be a hole that's, uh, that's open and your hot and cold air is coming in through that. So... This pet door takes care of both of those problems brilliantly. Uh, it has a hinge at the top. Now, when you, you see the hinge, usually people think, well, this must be a rigid flap. It's not. The flap is actually soft, but by using a hinge, it just saves the wear on the top. And then the other thing it has is a, a full-length magnet. Now, this magnet goes all the way down the side, and there's another one that goes all the way down the frame. Uh, and then across the bottom, there's, there's I think, four magnets in this extra large um, that go across the bottom as well. And every side kind of automatically compensates um, uh, for the size of the flap. So on the bottom here, this thing, this uh, floating magnet bar, they call it, jumps up to hit the bottom of the, of the flap. On the sides, you've got this kind of bellows type of situation, and these sides are flexible. So uh, right now, it's been, it's February 2014, it's been really, really cold a lot across a lot of the United States. We're talking, you know, I keep getting people calling up saying, it's minus 45 out. <laughs> and uh, my dog went to hit the pet door and instead of opening, the flap just snapped right off. Uh, well, that's not gonna happen with this one because it's on a hinge. So, so that solves that problem. The other thing is, uh, you know, it's minus five out and my flap has shrunk, and now there's a gap around the sides. Not a problem here, because this thing is gonna stretch out and hit the sides, uh, even if the center of the flap uh, shrinks up. So they really have done an excellent job of making this thing function in extreme cold and extreme heat, too. I mean, what's good for the heat is good for the cold in terms of insulation value. So the other thing about this flap is it is hollow. Uh, if I click it open and turn it sideways here, hopefully you get a good view there. The flap itself is about maybe three quarters of an inch thick, and it is hollow. It's got an inside uh, part and an outside part, and then there's a dead air space in the center. And a lot of people, when they first see this door, they think that this is where the flap kind of articulates and bends, but obviously it doesn't. What that's there for is just to keep the flap separated, because if it was one big sheet with no, with no walls in it, it would just kind of collapse over time, and then you wouldn't get the double, the double pane effect that it has. So it is like a double pane effect, and then when you have one of these frames with a flap on the inside and one of these frames with a flap on the outside, you basically got like two double pane flaps or four layers uh, from the outside air to the inside air. So again, very, very weather tight. Windproof too, because of all these magnets. They took this door in a medium size. And this is the only company that I'm aware of that's actually put their pet door in a wind tunnel. And they did. Uh, so medium size with a single flap took a 50 mile an hour wind. That's five zero mile per hour to blow it open. So with a double flap, I mean, you're talking what, hurricane, tornado force winds to, to blow the thing open. I mean, it's just really, really good. So if you're, you know, on the prairie somewhere, uh, you know, or if you live next to the ocean or on a lake, something like that, uh, this is a good pet door for that type of situation. Um, there are a couple of, uh, of bad things about it. Um, for one, it only comes in white. So if you're a real stickler for aesthetics, that can be an issue. Another thing is the locking cover, the locking cover is really good, actually. The locking cover has this kind of form shape, and it makes it stiffer than, than the ones that are just flat plastic. And it does have this spring-loaded pin so that you can't lift it up from the outside uh, when you put it in. So, um, so it's a good locking cover. Um, but, uh, but it only comes in from the top. So if you're mounting this underneath a, a cabinet or underneath a window that has a sill that sticks out, you might not be able to get the locking cover in. Uh, if that's a problem, take a look at the hail and the Plexidor pet doors. Those have locking covers that either slide in from the side or that bolt straight on. 
so you don't have to have the extra room on top. Uh, this one, if you take the, the flap dimension and multiply it by two, you know, that's roughly what you're going to have to have in order to get the locker cover in, in terms of height clearance. Um, the, the tunnel on these comes at eight inches deep, and then you trim it down to the depth that you're working with. Uh, this one, I trimmed down, I, was, I, I had a little model, uh, a wood frame that I built out of two by fours, so I was just messing around with this one, so I cut it down. But, uh, but they do come at eight inches deep. Now when you get one of these, or when you look around at these pet doors online, uh, and you look at reviews in particular, you'll see two things. One, best pet door ever. Two, installing it is a real pain in the butt. And the installation is, is difficult because they have you kind of put the two frames together through the wall and then fish through there and, and try to find the screw hole on the opposite side while, you're, while you've got this long, this low stud in your hand, you're reaching through and trying to find the hole on the other side. It's not the easiest thing to do. Um, I, have a, I have a tip for that. I'm going to kind of tack it on to the end of this video, so uh, stay tuned and, and you'll, you'll see that information. Um, but it's, it's, it makes it a little bit easier. It's not that bad in the first place. And you're really, the good news is you should only have to do it once because these flaps should last forever. Um, in fact, I went down to the manufacturer when they were designing this flap and they had in this machine. The machine just pushed it back and forth and back and forth. And when I was there, the machine was at, uh, was at 2,250,000 cycles back and forth. And they got it up over 3 million before the, uh, the, the seal on the edge finally failed. So it is ridiculously durable. Uh, and it's, that's, that's really why I like it so much. Um, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions at all, oh, one more thing, one more thing. Uh, this is actually important. <laughs> the extra large. Most extra larges are too wide to fit between studs that are 16 inches on center. Uh, this one, they were smart. They actually said, okay, what's the widest that we can make that will fit between studs that are 16 on center? And that's this extra large. So if you, this will fit 150 pound dog, and it just barely squeaks in there. Um, so if you got a dog that's 150 pounds or less, and, and you, you want it to fit between those studs, this is the way to go. Um, if it doesn't fit between studs, then it's essentially like cutting a hole in a wall and putting a, putting a, a window in. So you've got the, the load that comes down through, this, through the vertical studs. And what you have to do is you have to cut across and then you have to put a header in that goes across so that the weight that comes down can be spread out around the, the window frame and down to the bottom. Well, that's the same thing you do with, a, with a, an extra large pet door. Um, you just do it closer to the ground. So uh, you can avoid all that header nonsense if, uh, if you can fit your dogs um, into this extra large, the 12 by 23. So I think that's about it. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, my number is 866-377-3667. Email address is sales at petdoorstore.com. Um, there's also a chat function on the website, and I'll answer it whenever I hear it. So uh, if, I, if I happen to be around the computer uh, after hours and I, I hear it going off, I will, I will get it. Hi, John Mortensen, owner and operator of PetDoorStore.com, and I'm just going to show you a quick and easy tip to get the Endura wall through pet door installed. This is my favorite wall pet door, and uh, it has a pretty, pretty unanimously uh, brilliant reputation, but the one thing that you'll see over and over again is getting the studs uh, through the wall and engaged onto the, uh, the, the, the threads on the opposite side is a real pain in the butt, and hopefully this will make that a little bit easier for you. So what you're going to do is... Leave two of the studs at the full length and then put them in opposite corners. And all this really allows you to do is to take the exterior frame and plug it on and then kind of use the studs to align everything. Now this part right here is kind of the tough part, getting the frames uh, plugged into each other. And look, it just kind of fell right in there. So that's uh, good for me, but uh, you probably won't have quite as much luck there. <laughs> but you kind of have to finagle the two frames together and then you're going to use uh, the, the, the tools in the instructions. So you're going to cut down your stud, you're going to use your little barrel nut, and then your screw on the other side, and poke this through. And, uh, and then you should be able to find the, uh, the threads on the other side a lot easier. So that's basically it. 
course, you have to do the same thing with these. You pull these out, um, cut them to length, put the Loctite on the end, put the screw back on, and, and screw it back in. But that's basically it. This is, like I said, uh, the, the best pet door on the market, in my opinion. So doing what you have to do in order to get through this one uh, step of the installation is, is worth the effort because uh, they just don't get any more durable or more weather tight than this one. All right. Thanks very much for watching.